I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, please invite your friends and as you see, you know, look like people did not take note. Uh, we mentioned before that we will go in a fixed day, twice a week, and we will do it once in Sunday morning and once on Wednesday night. Uh, morning, my time, New York time, and night is New York time too. So like, you know, as you see now, I, I look, there's nobody really, I mean, a few people here. Um, but I said, you know, let us do it. I was planning actually to start from the next week. But remember this from now on, every Sunday morning, 10.30 New York time, 10.30 New York time, we will be live. This is a fixed day, fixed time. And every Wednesday evening, 9 p.m. New York time. Uh, so you convert that to your time and you see what time it is. So for me right now is 9.41. Look at your watch. That's mean you have to go back 41 or 42 minutes on time. And this is, would be our time every Wednesday. Now Wednesday for me is going to be Thursday for some people, right? Uh, like those who live in Indonesia, etc. So if you're in Indonesia, then you make in your mind every uh, Thursday, my time is Wednesday, your time is going to be Thursday. Just, you know, fix your, your timing. Now, today, as you see, we have a question which no Christian can answer. You know, it's a very hard question. And uh, the Muslim, they keep posting this question all over, and no Christian can answer it. What is this question? And why the Christian cannot answer it? Why is it so difficult? Brother, it's so difficult. Actually, it's a scary question. So, you know, the Muhammadan, there are people who, like, you know, the parrot, it's a bird who repeats things without even knowing what he is saying. This is exactly our problem with the Muhammadan. They heard somebody saying that, they repeat what that person said. And now I will give you the question which no Christian can answer. It's very difficult. It's a very, 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 very bad. Oh, before I start, actually, I want to say thank you for those who did donate to the Ukrainian account, not my account, remember, Ukrainian charity group. Uh, right now we have a 308 uh, people who subscribe to their account. Uh, I say thank you very much for those who support. And remember here, we are not supporting a government. Actually, if you ask me, I believe the president of Ukraine is an idiot. Uh, I respect him only because he did not run, you know, in war. Uh, but I believe all presidents in the world are idiot. And the one in Biden is an idiot and Putin is an idiot. So we are not supporting uh, an agenda or propaganda or uh, government. 
we are supporting the right of people to live in their houses safe and secure that's all and we will be against anyone who attack any country even if it's a muslim country because so what if they are muslims they have life they have children they have they have the right to live in peace like everybody so somebody did not attack you you don't attack him as simple as that and if you want to go in war you go in war with the army you don't start bombing cities and children and women so i want to say thank you for all those who support uh, uh, the church in uh, uh, this organization which is you know present many churches uh, who they are working to help the poor and the needy i really appreciate your help now we go to our topic the question which no christian can answer and this question you will see every day uh, posted by the muslims you know the muhammadan as usual they are superior in intelligence not like christians or jews or hindus or buddhists they are different you know? they are from high high ground and because they are from high ground and their god is special you know, special very special they have uh, their own way of understanding things and seeing things so the muhammadan uh, who come always and they pose the question they pose the question so everybody can see it A Muhammadan, he said, his name Al Dird Tawasil. Al Dird Tawasil. He said, <laughs> How true is that? One plus one plus one can be a one true God? Let us zoom in and see how funny the Christians believe is. How true is that? One plus one plus one equal that can it be one God? Ha ha ha. <laughs> you know, here you see the stupidity of the Muhammadan. They present for me the stupid Muhammad too by their statement. Because, in one hand, the Muslim they say, Allah is capable of everything, Allah is Almighty. Allah can do anything. But obviously, Allah cannot be. Three and one. So Allah cannot be God. <laughs> so the question itself actually is not a question. It is telling you the reality of the stupidity of the cult of Muhammad. Because if God, aka Allah, supposedly, he is God. And the Muslim, they call him, uh, you know, uh, the Almighty God. You ask the Muslim, what Almighty mean? Oh, he can do everything. There is no limitation for him what he can do. Uh, there is no, etc. You know, you're actually, the question in front of us, then us, that you are actually questioning what God can be. And here you see the hypocrisy of this garbage cult. You know, and I answer this, Abdul. Well, you are right. How the sun set in a hot, muddy water, yet it is not the one plus one plus one who said that, it is Allah. So the Muhammadan, he questioned how God can be three and one. But he don't question how God can be stupid. How God can be donkey. How God can be mental. And here you ask yourself, do Muslims even really believe in God? Obviously they don't. Because if they believe in God, then nobody can tell God what he can be and what he, what he can be not. But obviously, the Muslims, the Muhammadans, they don't believe in that. The Muhammadans, they believe that the God the God, the one they have, they have to tell him what he can be. Otherwise, he cannot be God. If you remember in the Quran, 
And this is how you Christians should answer. You know, well, are you saying that God cannot be three and one? Well, if he cannot be three and one, he can't be God. Because God is almighty. If God, he says, I am a hundred and one. Are you going to tell God what he can? Either he believe in him or not. And then if Allah, he said in the Quran that he is seven, the Muslim will believe. As simple as that, nobody will discuss. Here you see that we are not uh, debating with Muhammadan. They are, we are, uh, you know, they make an argument of a foolishness. Present the foolish God they follow. And why God cannot be three and one at the same time? Somebody tell me. If there's any Muslim here listening, why God cannot be three and one at the same time? Any Muhammadan? They cannot answer. If there is any Muhammadan would like to call me, I would open my Skype and I will uh, take your call in case there is. Actually, let me open my Skype in case we have a Muslim would like to join us, a Muhammadan. You know, maybe he have a way to explain to us why their God cannot be three and one. What is the problem exactly? My God, he can, because he's almighty. Obviously, your God, he cannot, for he is not almighty. So this argument actually is going to be used for our benefit, not for yours. For the true God is the one who can do what nobody can do. It is impossible for you, impossible for her, impossible for him, simply because they are not God. But for us, you know, we believe in God. And our God, he can do what nobody can do. My Skype is open. If there's any Muhammadan who would like to join us, please feel free just, uh, you know, uh, text me. You cannot call me directly. You know, I have a setup in Skype, so people will not bother. Because what the Muslim do, by the way, they try to call. The second a Muslim he call me, you will find a hundred Muslim trying to call in order to drop the Muslim call because they knew he might most likely leave Islam. Now, if you are a Muslim who trusts his religion and you think you will not leave Islam if you call me, then, you know, go ahead, you know, text me. All right? Any Muhammadan? So my Skype is open. I will be happy to see any Muslim. So I want the Christian to remember this. When a Muslim, he said to you such a sentence, they are giving you a very nice weapon to rip Muhammad and Islam apart. Their God cannot be one and the three in the same time. He cannot. Look at the question. It's not me who is using the word can. It is them. Do you see it? Can it be a one God? So the Muhammadan, they are the one who is using the word can. And this is a word are coming as a question. And the second you make it as a question, that's mean you are questioning if God can or cannot. And obviously the can here is coming to present that he cannot. And when he speak about he cannot, he's speaking about his God. So the foolish Muhammadan is giving us a very clear arm to rip Muhammad apart and add more nails in his coffin and laugh at him. Secondly, we don't know what this is one plus one plus one is, but we will go with it, no problem. You know, because we are not doing mathematics here. Uh, but the Muslim, they have, you know, as I said, they, they hear somebody saying, uh, uh, Zach and Naik, he said once, the Christian, they have a wrong mathematics. 
They say one plus one plus one equal to one. But we never say, we don't believe in one plus one plus one. We don't. Show me where, where it says that. So they lie even about, about our belief. They fabricate a formula. But that formula which they are fabricating is giving a big screw to Muhammad. And we are here to use those screws against Muhammad. That's what we do. Now, you know, from time to time, you will see some people like Christians or maybe they, I don't know, atheists, I don't know who they are. They post comment in the chat. They say, Christian friends, can you give the, the other person a chance to talk? Like as an example, this person. Galith Kandra. Okay, smart person. He's saying, CP, please give your debate opponent a chance to at least breathe. This is not a self-talk show, is it? Uh, you know, I don't want to insult you, my friend, but you are an idiot. I'm just, I'm not insulting. Because when a Muslim, he talk, and I ask him the question first time, second time, third time, fourth time, sixth time, seventh time, eighth time, and still he want to jump out of the question. Give him time to talk? Those people, they are other side of the dummy story. They have, they are deaf, they are blind, and they are dummies. But they are in YouTube. Eh, what we can do about them? Well, don't you see? I repeat the question first time, second time, third time, for twenty time, and the Abdul he's still trying to escape. So you are trying to say to me, give him a chance to escape. So what? Oh, this is not a debate then. Because the second point will be the same. The second I ask him something or I say something, he will skip it. And the excuse is, give him a chance to breathe. No. There's no breathing. Here you will drown. If you have a lie, I will make you drown with your lies. Now, do we have any Mohammedan? Hindu have hundreds of God, and they say they have one. How different from Christianity? Well, this is a good question, Mr. Golden. Uh, but obviously, you are an idiot. But by the way, don't get offended when I say you're an idiot. I'm just giving you a rank. You know, you should be happy. Because, in case you do not know, the Hindu themselves they believe. To... Okay, uh, the second. Let me let me go there. Uh, the Hindus themselves, they believe in gods, but they believe in one God at the same time. And this is Zakir Naik. In a public uh, debate, I think. He said that we and, uh, and Hindus uh, we have the same belief. Let me see. Uh, 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 the concept of God for the Hindus, and the one is talking is Zakir Naik. Let me show you the video. So this is Zakir Naik. You know, he decided to study about the Hindu, what they believe. And he come to the conclusion that Muslims and Hindus, they have the same belief. I'm not making things up. The video in the front of your eyes. Watch and love. The first is the concept of God. Let us understand what is the concept of God in Hinduism. If you ask a common Hindu that how many gods does he believe in? Some may say three, some may say ten, some may say hundred, some may say thousand, while others may say thirty-three crores, three hundred and thirty million. But if you ask a learned Hindu, who is well versed with the scriptures, he will tell you that the Hindus should believe and worship only one almighty God. <laughs> but the common Hindu, he believes in a philosophy known as pantheism. Okay, so did you hear it, Abdul? Did you hear it? You know, when I call them potatoes, I call them potatoes for a reason. You know, potatoes have no shape. All of them, they are round or, you know, they don't have look. You know, you, you, you cannot recognize a potato from different potato. So the potato, the, the thing about them, 
that you know they copy each other. Nobody, nobody is reading. And then you will see Zakir Naik saying that the Hindu and the Muslim they have the same concept of God. Is imageless. No one can see him with his eyes. No one can see his form with these eyes. And amongst the Hindu scripture, the most popular is the Bhagavad Gita. It's mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, chapter number seven, verse number 20. Mm -hmm. All those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires, they worship demigods. Bhagavad Gita chapter. Anyway, the video is long and he is explaining that we and Muslims, Muslims and Hindus, we have the same concept of God. So the funny, you are asking me that we Christians are similar to the Hindus when in fact it is you. People, do you see the stupidity? In fact, it is you who have the same concept of God. We don't share anything with the Hindus. And this is your potato, Zakir Naik. He is quoting for you verse by verse from Hindu books to show you that you Muslims and Hindus shared one concept of God. Do you see the stupidity? Do you see how fast the propaganda and the agenda, how cheap? Very cheap. So the Hindus who have 335 million God or 300 million God, whatever it is, we find that they are sharing a lot of things with the Muslims. And this is Zakir Naik saying that to you, not me. Just search for the concept of God in Hinduism. Dr. Zakir Naik, there's tons of videos. This is not my videos. I have nothing to do with it, as you see. Concept of God, Hinduism. Concept of God, Hinduism, according to Bhagavad Gita. Concept of God, concept of God, concept of God. As you see, look how many times. And it is your book who called the Quran, the biggest chapter in the Quran, the cow chapter. So I find it really funny how those Muhammad and always they come with reasoning, which is not a reasoning, you know. When they want, they share everything with the Hindus. When they want, they share nothing. Depend on the propaganda. Depend on the propaganda. Now we have our uh, Skype open in case uh, there is any Muhammadan would like to join us. Uh, you know, so we can laugh at this religion. Or maybe you will make us laugh. Anyone? My friend, we don't care now how many gods in the Hindu, but this is Zakir Naik. He is explaining that the Muslims and the Hindu, they believe in the same God. And the Upanishad. It's mentioned in the Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number six, section number two, mm -hmm. verse number one. Ikkam evidityam. God is only one without a second. See? This See is it? a Sanskrit quotation. See it? It's mentioned in the Svita Svita Upanishad, chapter number six. Was yeah. So he count for you endless verses from uh, Hindu scriptures to confirm to you that Muslims and Hindus believe in one God. His name is Allah. What say you Muslims? They are so quiet. So when a Muhammadan he said to us, how God can be one plus one plus one? First of all, we don't believe in such a thing. But anyway, we will go with your garbage because this is your claim, not our no belief. Uh, you know, the answer is very simple. God, he can be as he wish. Nobody can tell God what he is. Unless you are the one who created him and you are the one who designed him. Or maybe you need to redesign him too. Here you notice the stupidity of this cult, how they think, and how when you follow a dummy 
person illiterate, as Muslim they call him, you become illiterate too. Because illiteracy is not about not to read and write. Actually, the Quran never said that illiteracy is about not to read and write, but they are dummy. If you go in the Quran, you will see that illiteracy is the one who don't have a book of God. But those dummies who don't even know how to read their book, they say to you that the prophet is illiterate because the Quran says he's illiterate. The Quran never said Muhammad do not know how to read. The Quran make it so clear that the one who cannot, or he's the one who is illiterate, is the one who don't have a book not the one who cannot read. But how you can explain to somebody, he don't listen. His book make it so clear, and then somebody, his name is a Christian prince, will come and spank them to show them how dummy they are. Read with me. This is the chapter of the cow, the Hindu chapter, verse number 78. And there are among them illiterate who know not the book. <laughs> Do you see it? This is the situation of all Muhammadan. They are illiterate. They do not know their book and they do not know our book. Very simple. You know, when they ask Zakir Naik, well, you said that if you find me one verse in the Bible that Jesus saying, I am God, I will become a Christian. And that's what he said, Zakir Naik, you know. And they gave him the question where Jesus said in John 10, uh, Jesus said, me and the Father is one. But Zechariah, you can explain it very easy. Please explain this verse of the Bible, John 10.30. I and my Father are one. My Christian friends say that here in the Bible, Jesus, peace be upon him, is claiming divinity. So now Zechariah, you see, because he's a smart, he can explain to you what nobody can understand. The Christian can understand the verse, but Zechariah can understand very well. And this verse, according to Zechariah, Jesus is not saying that he's God. No. I don't want to waste your time, you know. But Zechariah, he says to you, well, you have to read it in context. Like, you don't read it out of context. Okay, what does that mean? Christian missionaries argue, no, 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 it is one in person. Let us see, go back a little bit, we are. God, they are one in purpose. They are one in purpose. So when Jesus says, me and the Father is one, he is saying me and God in purpose. But the same chapter he did read, it says that Jesus, he give eternity. <laughs> Omniscience, does it mean one as one entity? Does it mean one in in, uh, in, um, um, in 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 um, nature uh -huh. yeah yeah when jesus christ peace says i and my father are one it means one in purpose uh, so can you say yourself zakir naik you and allah is one <laughs> you see when we laugh at their at this stupidity we have a million reasons to love, you know? We have a million reasons to love. Somebody saying his name is Jani. Uh, your trinity is borrowed from the Hindu, Termorati. Well, my friend, that is very stupid of you. Because if we are borrowing from the Hindu, then we should believe in what the Hindu believe. And you will find that the one who is borrowing from the Hindus is the Muhammadan. We just heard Zakir Naik explained the concept of God in Hindu, and he proved that the Hindu believe not in Trinity, they believe in oneness of God. So you Muslims are a bunch of liars. Zakir Naik, he says, the concept of God for the Hindu is the same concept of God for the Muslims. Muhammadan come to the chat and they say, uh, no, who is lying here? Who is lying? Is this is your Zakura explaining the Hindu scriptures saying that they believe in one God? Verse number nine. Nacha Sikasij, Janitana Chadipa. Of that God, he has got no parents, he has got no Lord, he has got no father, he has got no mother, he has got no superior. Did you see? This is the same as the Quran. 
<laughs> who is the one who borrowed from the Hindus? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, you know, when, uh, when Muhammad and they cry, I find it very funny. They didn't even know their book. They can't even read a verse in their book. They can't explain a verse in their book, but suddenly they became skilled in our book. I don't know how. When Jesus says, I am the living God, they say nowhere in the Bible, Jesus says, I'm God. When Jesus says, I am and the Father is one, they say he did not say he is one, really. He said he is in purpose. <laughs> When Jesus says, I give eternity, in the same chapter, this guy, this potato, he was reading it, the same chapter saying that Jesus gave them eternal life. Well, do, do Prophet give eternal, do Muhammad give eternal life? I'm ready to accept Christianity. Now let us analyze this. Let us analyze. Was of the Bible. Uh -huh. To know the real meaning, you have to read the context. Exactly. If you read a few verses before, Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 23, it says, And Jesus entered in the temple in Solomon's porch. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 24 says, And the Jews came around him and said, Why, how long does thou make us doubt? If thou art the Christ, tell us plainly. Verse number 25, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have told you, but you believe not. The work that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. He just said my father's name. <laughs> Jesus, he did not claim. <laughs> Zachary Naik, he agreed with the chapter, but Jesus did not say that he is God. He just said my father. <laughs> And he said, the work I do, the work I do, what work he do? Listen carefully, what work Jesus he do? <laughs> you believe not. The work that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. <laughs> Verse number 20. Here you notice that Jesus, the work he do in his father's name, it witness for him. Where is the work of Muhammad, which is going to witness for him? Going after a six years old child, going to the house of his own son, raping the wife or sleeping with her when the husband is away, and making a verse from Allah saying, why you tell the man not to divorce your wife? Hiding what is in your heart? Where is the work of Muhammad where Jesus can make the blind see, he heal the leper, he created from the mother bird as the Quran says, he resurrect people from death? What is my work, Jesus said, my work witness for me. Muslim, they witness to a man, he did nothing, except being a rapist, a child molester, a thief. Right? What is the work of Muhammad? And then when Jesus, he speak about my work, his work is beyond the work of a man. If we ask the Muhammadan now, according to your book, what is left God can do and Jesus cannot do? According to your Quran, find nothing. Jesus, he created from the mother bird. He breathed into it. He make it a living bird. The Quran said that. Can Allah do that? Prove it. What is the work of Allah? Allah is a false god who claimed the work of others to be his. It's like a thief, you know. He steal your car, he paint it, he spray some spray on it, and then he claimed that this is his car. Now, if you are a Mohammedan, call us. Text me and I will call you, because we need to laugh. Was number 27 my sheep they hear me i know them and they follow me you see jesus here he speak about a human being 
they called him my sheep and he is the shepherd that is a language of the whole almighty god because if we, he is a human like us and we are a human like him well how we are sheep then what does that mean how we can be sheep is that to insult no sheep here present the the dignity and you know, like sheep like honest in you know, honest very honest animal right like you take him to to slaughter him and he is a, like a dove beautiful animal there's millions of dogs nobody killed them and there's hundreds of millions of sheep you kill them but the sheep never over and never been disconnected why because there's a blessing for them so here you notice that Jesus is speaking from above. This is why Jesus said, I am from above, you are from below. How, how a Muslim can explain that? Eh, he will drink some camel urine and he will give it any meaning he wants. I am from above, you are from below. And then he will see that Zechariah, he will come to the conclusion where it says that Jesus, he gave eternal life. Verse number 28. I give them eternal life. They shall not perish. No man. Do you see it? Who gave eternal life? Did he say God will give them eternal life? No. He said, I give them eternal life. And the stupid people, they say to you, Well, Jesus said, I'm God. I mean, can you imagine the stupidity? You just did read. A verse Jesus saying, I give them eternal life, you donkey. And then you say to us, where Jesus says, I am God, can Muhammad give eternal life? Muslims, can Muhammad give eternal life? Do you see why we laugh at the stupidity of this cult? We have a comment here from a Muhammadan. You know, Muhammadan, when they make comment, I don't know. I think, uh, you know, the Muslim, they might accuse me that I paid those people to make those comments because their, their comment is shown how stupid they are. Jesus of the Quran and the Bible could not even achieve what Moses and Muhammad achieve, okay? In their lifetime, how can you ever even try to compare Jesus with Allah, SWT, SWT, which means stupid, widespread TS disease. Abdul, you stupid. You are saying to me that Jesus could not accomplish what Muhammad and Moses accomplished, you stupid donkey. Isn't it Jesus right now is alive? You stupid mentor. You Muslim believe that Jesus right now is in heaven and you are talking about who accomplished what? You're a prophet, he stink. Even the hadith says, قَدْ نَتَنَا قَدْ أَنْتَنَا اِتْفِنُوا صَاحِبَكُمْ فَقَدْ رَبَى بَطْنَهُ Bury your friend, his stomach is full of fart. And you are talking about that Jesus did not accomplish. So the one right now in heaven, he could not accomplish anything. And the one who is dead and his belly was full of fart, they did not bury him for three days. They thought he is like Jesus. <laughs> and you are claiming that he did not accomplish anything and not only that the Muslims are waiting for Jesus not for Muhammad and Jesus will come back and will kill the devil and Jesus did not accomplish anything he's a failure <laughs> and here you notice by the way that the mentality of, of the donkey is the superior how? because if Jesus let us go with the flow you know with the flow of, of, of the claim if Jesus was a failure or have a failure, but, is, but isn't it Jesus is a prophet of Allah, you donkey? So you blame who then? Do you blame Jesus or you blame Muhammad or you blame Allah? Donkeys, they are insulting even their God. Small brain, low IQ, certified idiot. And this is why they don't this is why their sheikh don't dare to call me. Because I will make them shish kebab before even they touch their nose. So Jesus who make 
the dead alive, he did not accomplish anything. Jesus, who did raise people from death, create the bird from mud, uh, heal the leper, uh, you know, uh, and the, his, uh, the followers who believe in him, they are the majority of mankind. He did not accomplish anything. And right now he's alive in heaven. But right now, Christians and Muslims are waiting for him to come back. He did not accomplish anything. <laughs> you know, I told you many times, I love the Chinese wisdom. When they said he left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. That is your prophet. And you are just copying what your prophet is saying. Uh, Jesus, he could not convince his own disciple. Why well, you don't call me so we can laugh together, Jenny? Because according to your stupid Quran, the disciple of Jesus, not only they are convinced, they sacrifice themselves to save him. Here you see again how the Muslims are a bunch of hypocrite liars. They lie even about their book. They deny their book. They deny what their book says. Isn't it your stupid prophet, he says, that Jesus said, who want to die and take my look? <laughs> and he did not convince them? <laughs> my friend, and if you talk about convincing, who convinced who? Do you want me to show you the hadith? Is many tons of them. The Muslims are laughing at Muhammad and even Omar al-Khattab. He said, Qad hajar al -rasul, which means he become crazy. Do you dare to call me to show you the hadith where Umar ibn al-Khattab accusing your prophet that he is suffering from mental illness? Do you want me to show you the Quran saying that Muhammad could not even convince his wives and he needed the support of Allah and the angels and Jibreel and Al-Qaeda and ISIS and every single angel against two women? Hmm? Your prophet could not convince his wives, two wives. Two wives drive him not. And Allah, he decided to send them a warning. He said, listen to me carefully. Look at the war. You see, they were talking about war between Putin. This is bigger. Hafsa and Aisha, they made two party, Democrat and Republican. And Muhammad didn't know what to do. Nancy Pelosi is there. So Muhammad, he gave uh, a ring to Allah. You know, I mean, who is going to help Muhammad beside Allah? Who is the best helper for Muhammad? Especially when you have two women, they are five foot tall and their nails is so long. Hmm? So Muhammad, he sent uh, like a, a rescue uh, call uh, to Allah. And you know for sure he have to use a special kind of coding because he is worried about Christian prince and the genie spying at his call. Allah, he received the message immediately through Jibreel. Jibreel, he got the facts, Morse, he translated, he took them to Allah office, Allah, he shoot the alarm, and he sent the message back. And now the message is going back. By the way, the message should take 1,000 years. The Quran says that fear of Allah, which means the angels who take care of things, it takes them 1,000 years to go and 1,000 years to come back. How Morris went there in two seconds? Don't ask, don't tell. So now Allah, he wrote this and he sent it back to Muhammad. And Muhammad, he received the good news. Look at the good news. This is God Almighty who created the seven eleven heaven. He's sending a, an, an urgent message. If two of you, between two brackets, wives of the Prophet S.A.W., namely Aisha and Hafsa, that's me, that's meant to be dangerous. The Security Council of United Nations, they are now in meeting. Allah is there. Jibreel is there. The angels are there. 
Everybody is there. Kadarov with his puppies are there. Everybody, man, the whole world. Now, what? You know, it's dangerous. I mean, listen carefully. I told you before, I am still single. I mean, you don't play me. Look what happened to Muhammad. I'm learning from him. He is my best model. Two women, they scared the hell of Muhammad. Allah, look who, look who is going to help him. If two of you, okay, the wives of Allah Blafid, uh, turn uh, into repentance to Allah, uh, it's better for you. Your heart indeed is inclined uh, to oppose the Prophet of Allah, S-A-W. They are opposing Allah Prophet? You must be kidding me. Like, what the heck? How in the world they do that? Britain Prince, first of all, Zachary Naik, how in the world you enter the live broadcast without even calling me or ringing? How you do that? Britain Prince, Allah, you support me. And you send me a method by Harut and Marut. Harut and Marut. The Muslim who speak about the logic, how one can plus one plus one plus one, which is not our belief anyway, can be one God, they believe in Harut and Marut. I mean, do you see how much there are people who speak, uh, they believe in how can, who cannot? Harut and Marut, they teach magic to cause divorce. By the way, there's one of you, he made me upset in the chat. I did Harut and Marut for him. And guess what? He's filing now for divorce. Guaranteed, you know? Took me just five minutes. Shita is like, you know, it's not a it's not shita like the you know the thing in the zoo. No, no. This is different shita. This is harut and marut words, you know. Shita ma shita shita, you know, cow, how how meow. And then you go and divorce shish kebab hummus. So now Muhammad is in a fight with two wives and uh, Muslim says that Jesus could not do anything, you know? <laughs> hey, Jenny, just go, man. You're just a kid. I have no time for your stupid comment. You're obviously your certified donkey. So as you see here, the Muslim don't, don't question how in the world we have a God. And the Muslim, they say he can say B is going to be. And then he is sending a message, a threat to two females have four boobs and long nails, threatening them that Muhammad is not alone. Okay, who is beside Al Muhammad? Be careful. But if you help one another against him, then verily Allah is his mawla. Mawla meaning mule, you know? Because Muhammad, he used Allah as a mule, he ride him. Any problem Muhammad he have, he used Allah immediately. And we know that this verse made by Muhammad. He gave up, he did not know what to do with those women. This is how good he is. So he said, let me make a verse saying that Allah said that, that and that's it. Allah said that, the mule Allah. So verily Allah is his mawla, uh, between two bracket, his lord or master or protector or etc. By the way, etc. is a new name of Allah, as you see. The Muslim now is explaining what mawla means. Etc. So put that additional to the 99 names, which mean nothing and they are funny. Etc. And Jibreel, so it's not enough Allah is supporting Muhammad. No, the fight is big, man. Are you kidding me? I mean, women are scary, I'm telling you. Never fight with the women. Either she will give you a heart attack or she will take your credit card, you know? And the second she take it, that's it. Say bye bye, you know, like. Your salary is gone, you know, hello, see you, you know, you know, she call you honey until she take the credit card. After that, like, why are you all calling me? Are you doing shopping? Yes, I did not do shopping yet. Because the credit card now is with her, you know. So Muhammad is in trouble now. He don't know what to do. So Allah is, Allah is enough? No. And Jibreel, like, what the heck? Jibreel is coming too? Yes, because the fight is so big. He have 600 wings, Prophet Muhammad said. But look like the wings of Jibreel, they don't even make a barbecue in front of those two women. Because as you see, Allah and Jibreel is not enough. And every righteous among the believer, what the heck? Al-Qaeda, ISIS, 
Kadarov, Putin, all of them, everybody. And is that enough? No, the fight is so big. And furthermore, the angels. And then they say to us how God can be three and one. <laughs> this is religion and this is God. Well, my God, he can be three and one. Your God, he cannot. Your God, your God is a handicap with my respect to handicap people. He cannot. My God, he can. You got a problem, Muslims. Your God cannot. Is that my problem? Huh? Uh, Part Rahman, he laughed at my book. I don't know. Part Rahman, he laughed at the Muhammadan when they say to him that, uh, uh, that Allah in the Quran, he said, that if a book is not from Allah, it's going to have contradiction. But Rahman, which is a Borat, he said, well, this is this is stupid. This is have nothing to do if uh, from God or not, because I have a phone book, has zero contradiction, and it's not made by God. <laughs> Our pagan Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you see how you can laugh at the logic of Allah in two seconds? The Muslim, they carry their verse around the world. If the book is doesn't from Allah, it's how to have a contradiction. The guy, he throw a tons of poo, poo over the clean. He said, you stupid idiot. What does this have to do with God being God or not? But I have a phone book, has zero contradiction. Is it made by Allah or God? Donkeys. Muhammad is a donkey. Allah is a donkey. Prove me wrong. Because this is the logic of a donkey. And not only that, if we examine the contradiction of the Quran, we will find the whole Quran is a contradiction. And my Skype is open. Any Muhammadan? Anyone? Any half Muhammadan? We could not get a full Muhammadan. Maybe we can get a half Muhammadan. And then you will find the Muhammad and he says to you in the comment section, well, you are debating Muslims who they are not knowledgeable. I never met a Muslim knowledgeable. Your prophet himself is not knowledgeable. Is he? Your God himself is an idiot. And why you don't call me and get me the Muslim knowledgeable? Anyone he will text me in Skype, I will block you, unless you are a Muslim. Blocked. Don't tell me I want to help you, I want to translate your book. Don't text me there. Don't ask me how I can donate for you. Those are silly questions. Do we have any Muhammadan? Harun Abdullah saying, Kam yadfa'una laka muqabila adam ahtiram Allah. Harun is asking a serious question. How much they are paying you to disrespect Allah? Well, you know what? I'm going to think about your question seriously. And seriously, you will be ashamed of your stupidity. Look what happened now. According to you, Muhammad, and everything is a destiny made by Allah. Correct? So the donkey you saying to me that Allah, he made a destiny for me, that somebody is going to pay me so I can laugh at him. <laughs> Isn't it every 
everything bad happen by the permission of Allah? The Quran says so. Every bad thing happen is by the permission of Allah. So if a Christian prince is bad, well, it happened by the permission of Allah. And Allah, he made a destiny for somebody to pay me to laugh at Allah. This is how stupid your religion is. Are you laughing now? Hmm? According to your stupid religion, Allah, he hired somebody to pay me so I can laugh at Allah. Perfect. Are you there, Abdul? And then you will see somebody come and says, why are you calling them potatoes? I mean, give me a different name to call them. A potato is a delicious, they are not. And talking about pain, isn't it your prophet who refused to meet anyone without paying him first? As you see, people come here and people go and they don't have to pay anything, you stupid donkey. You know the Muhammad and they try to frame you, you know? This guy, like, how much they pay him, huh? Hmm? How much they pay him? I mean, why did you pay me when you came here? Like the door, nobody opened the door for you? Until you pay and then you can come in? Uh, must be true then, brother. I don't know that. Uh, uh, this is your prophet, you know? Uh, uh, your prophet, he says it clearly. You know, I'm not going to meet anyone unless you pay me first. And the funny is, the Muslim, they say, don't meet, if you want to meet your prophet, in a private consultation. Hmm? Private what? Consultation. Look at how many verses. Uh, my friend, I just told people not to text me in Skype. Did you hear it? Even the one who said to me, I want to meet for you. He's seeking private consultation. I blocked him. Your prophet, he love a private consultation, especially if it's a woman. Do you remember the story of the woman who came to him and she said to him, I see a water in my vagina? Your prophet, right away, this is the only one she did not pay for the consultation. Are you there? Private consultation? What does that mean exactly? I mean, why you have to pay your profit, 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 consultation? Huh? Harun, why you are so quiet? Is it true I'm making things up that your profit, he encouraged Muslims to pay him if they want to have a private consultation? Thousands, millions of people watch my videos for free. Even I give my books for free. Why your prophet, he will not talk to you unless you give him private consultation. Okay, believer. Who do you believe? When you want to consult the messenger of Allah in private, send something. <laughs> Go to Petrio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, again, people, did you take a note? You see, if next Wednesday we have a low number of a view at this time, I will not go live again in Wednesday. And maybe I will cancel the whole time. At night time. I thought to myself, I will make it at night time, in my time, so people in Asia, they can join us. But maybe it's not a good time, you know, to, to invite people. So we will tell you one more time. Every, every uh, Sunday morning, every Sunday morning, and Sunday morning, which is going to be, uh, like, I don't know, your time, you know, I mean, Sunday morning in the New York time. Every Sunday, Sunday morning, I think we decided to make it uh, temporary. Uh, let's see, hold on. Let me clean my screen, just to be sure. All right, because I have too many, uh, you know, 
uh, screenshot for the Abdul when they are smiling. Okay, every every Sunday morning, 10.30 New York time, and every Wednesday, 9 p.m. New York time. So next Wednesday, if we notice that the number is not really good, then I will cancel the Wednesday because obviously not many people is good for them. But we will keep the Sunday for sure. So take a note, if next Monday, uh, Wednesday, no, well, not many here, we will change it. People go to church. Here is a church, my friend. Here is a church. You see, here what we do is not what is what the church is not doing. If the church is doing their job, I will not be here. If our church is doing their job, I will not be here. The churches what they are doing is just a ritual service. But Christianity is not that. We need teachers. We need education. The Bible says my people demolished, destroyed because of their ignorance. We do not need people who wave their hands to Jesus. Jesus says go to your closet and pray. Uh, anyway, for sure, I encourage people to go to the church anyway. But this is my church, my friend. You like to join us here? You are welcome. You don't. You want to go to the church? Go. None of my business. Uh, we also need the gospel, not only Islam talking. Yeah, this is true. But here when we answer the Muhammadan, we answer your questions about the gospel too. Because Muslim, they make a claim and we get them busted. That's what we just did now. In the church, you're not learning the gospel. They are reading the gospel for you. There's no teaching. You can read it alone. Really, you find a teacher in a church. You find a priest. Priest who take a salary, health insurance. He go every Sunday, like, like the Sheikh, like Islam, you know, business. But they don't dare to say something serious. They don't dare to teach you something useful. They repeat themselves. They are the same as the Pharisees in the time of Jesus. But if there is a church where the priest is a good man and he teach, that's wonderful. But not too many, my friend. And anyway, who is telling you not to go to church? I mean, there is churches open Sunday, Saturday, Friday. Uh, and a Sunday is a long day. Uh, always there is more than one service. And my friend, please don't come here. Go to the church. God bless you. Pray for me in the church. Are you happy? Don't complain. Not all the churches are the same. Don't be an idiot. Well, my friend, if you are going to a church, you will not say to someone like me, an idiot. Because obviously the idiot is the one who never do anything. Not the one who sacrifice even his life. To bring people to Muhammad to, to, to Jesus. So little you who never done anything, he says to me, Don't be an idiot. You don't even dare to say one word of what I say. Who is the idiot? Hypocrite people. And if your churches are doing the good job, you will not be even in my YouTube now. Because you will be learned. You do not need to listen to me. They are not doing their work. They are just a priest like any religion. Stand up, sit down, give donation, wave your hand to Jesus. Thank you very much. Shake hands, drink coffee.
the same as the Muhammadan. And we don't want anyone to be here. Cat Stephen become a Muslim? Well, he is a cat. I'm not sure why he will not be. The favorite companion of Islam is Abu Huraira, the father of the cats. So if a cat, he became a Muslim, obviously he is horny. Because if we ask you why he become a Muslim, because Allah will make his penis endless and he will give him a lot of hookers. So what is the problem? He is a cat, he is horny, and he is thinking about his balls. May Allah bless your balls too. However, if you have a real balls, you can text me in Skype and let us have a conversation. You know, we have we made uh, tens of thousands of Muslims leave Islam. God, who is this guy, God, Stephen? What do you do for a living? If he sit with me in two or two minutes, he will leave Islam, trust me. Bring him. And after he talked to me, he will change his name from Kat to something else. Now, do we have any Muhammadan here there really to join us and talk to us? And you know, the Muhammadan they target famous people trying to convert them because this is, you know, this is, uh, this is satanic, demonic. But a true belief, true believers, the poor one is more important than the rich one. But they target the rich and the famous. Because this is satanic cult. As simple as that. Do we have any Muhammadan? So, uh, people, do, do you understand now when a Muslim he says to you, one plus one plus one, how to answer him? Don't explain. Actually, there's nothing to explain. First of all, we don't believe in one plus one plus one. But however, whatever he say. My God, he can be three and one. Your God cannot. Laugh at him. This is the answer. My God Almighty, your God is not. And the proof is in your question. When a Muhammadan, he say how God can be three and one, he is saying how God can be God. Because God, he can be. And that is my God. Your God cannot. The same when Allah, he says, how Allah can have a son when he doesn't have a girlfriend. Allah himself, he said the rule, Aka Muhammad, that he is not God. He's just a man like me and you. I, I cannot have a son unless I have a woman. So the answer for the Christians, for the dummy question, which the Muslim, they keep repeating is, my God can be three and be and one, for he's almighty. Your God cannot. The same as the stupid Muhammad when he said that Allah, he says, how oh, Allah can have a son if he didn't have a girlfriend? Girlfriend, he didn't even use the word wife. Sahiba, a girlfriend. Have you ever heard of a stupid logic like this? And here you notice that the Muslim they say, you cannot question Allah, brother. You cannot question Allah. What do you mean you cannot question? Allah himself is a question Allah. Look at this. He and Allah, he say he. Who is talking Allah? Allah said to Allah, he, eh, stupid, he is amazing. He, the originator of the heaven and the earth, how can he have a child when he has no wife? You stupid idiot. You just said he is the originator of the heaven and the earth. And now, he, and now suddenly the mission is complicated? Suddenly the mission became impossible? To have what? To have a son. So he can make the heaven. I mean, do you, do you know how big the heaven? The big heaven is bigger than my bathroom. I mean, the heaven of Allah I'm talking about. Very big, the heaven of Allah. Huh? So Allah make the heaven, the originator of the heaven, and, uh, you know, the earth. Uh, by the way, he made seven heaven and seven earth, right? Okay, it's, it's kebab. So he made seven heaven, seven earth, and now it's difficult for him to have a child without having a girlfriend? I mean, do you see how strong this God is? Any answer from the Muhammadan?
So my God, he can be three and one. Your God can't even have a child without having a girlfriend. And the verse in the front of you, and this is the logic of your stupid God, not my logic. It is the polite of talking to oneself. Ah, polite. Yeah, this is a polite. Yeah, guys, it is he, and I'm talking about myself now, because I want to be polite. So from now on, I will be not polite. From now on, I want to be polite. I mean, do you see how those people try to, to cover the ass of Allah with duct tape? This guy is a guru. Damn guru, come on, you know? Like a sad guru, you know? His name is Sad, and he is a guru. Fix the problem now. It is polite. Forum of talking to oneself. Mm. From now on, when I speak about myself, I want to say, it is he. Because I want to be polite. That's it. You touch my heart, brother. Maybe you can touch the heart of Sadhguru, who reported my video for copyright, and he was the one making speeches about, we have to accept each other. If somebody disagree with you, right away you go in a crazy mood. You need to learn with our soul of confident that it's okay if other person he criticize you. Fifteen minutes after I made the video, the coward he went to YouTube and he report copyright. I mean, do you see how much guru they are? All of them they are guru. The gurus of the boogers. Now do we have any Muhammadan? Hmm. Would you consider going live in TikTok? My friend, I prefer to go dead in TikTok. What is the name is scary? TikTok? I mean the name doesn't sound good. TikTok. It sounds like a like a a bunch of a crazy place there. The place is called TikTok. Why in the world I wanna go there? Can you change the name at least? TikTok. Like we're going to let us go to TikTok. Uh -huh, okay. We're in the world, and the other guy he called his Facebook. Why don't call it Facebook? I mean, that their names are stupid. I don't know where they got those names from. Facebook, Asbook, TikTok, you name it. And the world is going crazy. What is TikTok? I install it for five seconds and I delete it. Women shaking their ass and women shaking their boobs. What this TikTok is about? You should not allow even your children to have it in their phone. This is nothing but filth and madness. I mean, I downloaded the, uh, you know, they told me go TikTok, TikTok. I said, let's, let's see what this TikTok is. Right away, I downloaded the app. Right away, a woman with big boobs is shaking them, and she turned her ass and starts shaking it. And I was saying, like, what the heck? Is that how it take and talk there? We did not start talking yet. TikTok. You know, Muhammad is even more polite. Do we have any Muhammad in here? You don't think Muhammad he can save me? Well, your prophet cannot save himself, my friend. I can show it to you. Isn't it your prophet he asked you to pray to Allah to give him? A good place? Well, if Muhammad is saved, he did not need you, potato, to pray for him in order to earn salvation. Didn't you, Muslim, you say, 
صلى الله على محمد اللهم ابعثه مكاما محمودا what the heck is that so you are praying to Allah may he take him to heaven and look when your God Allah he spoke to Muhammad look what he said to them don't love by the way respect your Quran come on I mean come on you're an adult mature I mean you are six years old aren't you because according to Islam if you are six years old you have two nipples and you are mature look what happened here Allah he decided to tell Muhammad about his sin okay so Allah said to Muhammad, May Allah forgive your sin. And you are telling me that Allah cannot, you know, Muhammad cannot save me? Even his God is not sure if he can forgive his sin or not. He's asking different gods, saying, May Allah forgive your sin. It's a wish. Do you know what wish is? Let me tell you what wish is. Shh. Wish. Wish. A God who say maybe Allah is that a Halloween wish? Is that a birthday wish? Muhammad he blow the candles and Allah he said to him make a wish. But the one is talking here is Allah. So Allah saying to Muhammad that Allah may forgive thee sin. Fix that problem. Jesus, he said to the person who is a sinner, go and your sin is forgiven. The Jews in their mind, they start saying, who in the world is person who's forgiven sin? Jesus, he did read their mind. He says, which one is easier? To say to him, your sin is forgiven, or to say, carry your bed. The person cannot walk. Carry your bed and walk. While Jesus making the one who cannot walk, walk, and he forgives sin, Allah making a wish. Wish, wish. Any Muhammad, he have a wish? If you're God Allah, he is making a wish. And what is the wish? Forgive the sin of Muhammad. What a stupid religion. And what make it more funny, the Muslims, they say the Holy Prophet. I mean, the Quran says, may Allah forgive your sin, and they call him the Holy Prophet. I mean, do you see how holy he is in their book? The Holy Prophet, brother. Hmm. Do we have any Muhammadan here who would like to... It, look, it's it's really dry here. I don't know. So, guys, is this, uh, what do you think? I mean, you see, we decide to go every Sunday, ten thirty a.m. in the morning New York time, and every Wednesday uh, at nine p.m. New York time. So this time we did not have many, but I hope next week people will know and tell your friends. So every 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 Sunday. 10.30 a.m. New York time. And every Wednesday, those are fixed days, which mean I will be there. Unless, you know, God forbid something happened. Uh, something scary happened to me. As an example, uh, let us say, uh, you know, a, a chicken of the neighbor jump over my fence. Because last time I had a fight with my neighbor, he had a rooster, you know, and uh, he did lay an egg. And we were fighting if this is his rooster who laid the egg or my rooster. You know? Because we are both Middle Eastern and we are stubborn. Then there was a guy, he is an American, you know, he was walking by, he says, what's happening here? And then when he noticed that we are fighting over the egg, and yet both of us, we have roosters only, uh, he said, well, I think this is not your egg anyway. This is what we do here with Muhammadan. The Muhammadan, he is a rooster. He come with big feather. And he claimed that he have an egg. And then after debating him, we notice he have no balls, neither eggs, and he is not even a chicken.
Hmm. Any more, um, any rooster? And by the way, Muhammad, he have a special place for rooster. He said, don't, don't uh, curse the rooster. Well, look, what the heck? Why, why we don't curse? Because they wake up to people to pray. Why in the world anyone is cursing the rooster? I don't know. What the heck with this religion? He reported that Allah sons are saying, don't revile the a cook for it waken people for prayer. Okay. My friend, the same happened with the mosquito. She don't let you even sleep. And actually, even Muhammad, he have a hadith about the lies. He said, don't curse the lies. For they woke up a prophet to pray. Let me see if I can find the hadith. Hold on. When you read those things, you 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 uh, you think that Muhammad is like, uh, you know, one of those hippies. But then this guy he kill everybody. Don't don't say the f you to the baruth. Have you ever heard of a prophet like this? Why? Because he did he sting the prophet. I cannot find it here in English. Uh, let us see. I'm trying to find the hadith in English. <clears throat> Actually, Ali ibn Abu Talib, he said that lice is one of the best creatures. I cannot find it in the, in, the, in the translation. Let us see the from one place. I have tons of hadith, but you know they are all in Arabic, and the difficulty is to find them translated ready in English. I cannot find this one too. If we could not find it in English, we have to use Google translation. Oh, here, okay. Finally, we find one. Oh, this is Daif, brother. Anas ibn Malik reported that a man he cursed a fleas. What the heck is dead in what the heck? He cursed a fleas in the presence of the Prophet. May Allah bless him and grant him peace. The Prophet, may Allah bless him. And grant him peace says, don't curse them. A fleas, a flea, woke up one of the prophet for prayer. Who can fix this problem? So Muhammad is getting upset for cursing a flea, but he cursed people, he killed people, he raped people. But don't curse a flea. Do you know how harmful the fleas are and how many disease they can spread? This is a blast flea. Uh, Allah Akbar, I'm going to block you in my chat. When you attack ladies here, we send you free shipping and hand it into Allah. Coward son of Muta. Do we have any Muhammadan? Your God has fated rooster to do crow three times. Why he did that? God, he is showing you that he knew the future. That when the rooster make the noise three times, proving that he is God. For how he knew that when this happened, this person, he would do that. Which means when the morning come. Don't come here again. I don't have time for stupidity. We need serious people. 
adult mature do we have any adult mature muslim enough kids anyone he have a flea and by the way the prophet was full of a flea and i can prove it to you do you remember the guy his name is Usama abdullah once he come i used to be like you know doing program in paltok and i made tens of thousands of muslims leave islam there this guy, he come to the chat room and he said, Christians, he took the microphone, Christian, you are dirty, you don't take sour, you are properly, most of you full of a flea. So I said to him, are you saying the one who have a fleas is really dirty? He said, sure, <laughs> otherwise, why you would have a fleas? And then I put for him in front of him a hadith about his prophet was suffering from fleas. The second I showed him the hadith, he says, first of all, the prophet, and actually he made a video about it, saying YouTube, refuting Christian prince, he got five Muslims, who make big articles supposedly refuting the lies of Christian prince? He says the prophet is clean and even he clean himself from lies. <laughs> I mean, do you see how clean he is? He clean and he clean himself from lies. <laughs> and this is to prove that Christian prince is lying. <laughs> All right, well, I have to go and clean myself from lies because I'm so clean, you know, what are you going to do about it? I mean, obviously, you're so clean. Anyway, I think it's time to go. Not too many people here. Um, I thought we would have many. Again, guys, take a note, please. Every Wednesday. But if next Wednesday we did not have enough people here, I will cancel Wednesday, you know? Uh, every Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m. Sunday, every Sunday. 10 30 a.m. Take a note. When I say Sunday, 10 30 a.m. a.m. in New York time. So you convert that to your time, depend on your city, your town, wherever you live. And every Wednesday night, my time, 9 p.m. New York time. Sunday is going to be fixed for now because I think this is a good time for everybody. But if next Wednesday we did not get enough people here, I will cancel it and make it a free boxing time, which means we don't know when. All right. So I want to say thank you. I don't have to go, but you don't bring me customers. Where is the customers? You stand in the stage and there's no boxing. You know? Secondly, my friend, uh, Allah, He told me, may Allah forgive your sin. And this has alone make me dizzy. I will spend the night thinking about it. Allah saying he may forgive me. May Allah forgive you. Who's, who's talking? Allah. Okay. Allah saying, may Allah forgive your sin. Fix this problem for me. Okay. Just try to fix it. There's a God who say to God that may God forgive your sin. If you don't have a cross eyes until now, soon you will, if you keep reading this verse. You know? May Allah, that Allah may forgive thee sin. I'm getting dizzy. No one can fix this. No one. And the funny they say to you, the Quran, is the amazing book of literature. Liter what? Liter, look. Lu, we have given Muhammad a single signal victory. Okay. And because we give him victory, we say, may Allah, for, that Allah may forgive your sin. Okay. Hmm. Oh boy, the God of maybe. Can we play a friendly boxing game? That is the most, but by the way, I don't like boxing games because those games are commercial. They are in, in any humane, you know, because fighting, fighting is permitted to defend yourself, not to play games. And when people, they, these days they enjoy watching fighting i don't want to insult you 
But I want to tell you there's something wrong with your thinking. First, you know that they are fooling you. Secondly, even if there's a real fight, how that is a joy for you. I believe this kind of a sport is not a sport because it is all for money. You know, when people used to do sport, sport is for health, uh, to keep your body fit physically, but today's sport is something, is something disgusting and shameful. It's a commercial. It's people getting paid to play sport, and people pay to watch what is called a sport. Which means in reality there is no sport at all. And there is a team. And then this team buy this player. And tomorrow this player is sold to a different team. What the heck is that? People are fool and mad. That's why I never watch those things. You want to do learn how to fight? Go and train yourself. Good. You know? Very good. Keep your physique in good shape. But this is not a sport, my friend. This is not even this is against even the Bible. This is against the teaching of God. Because people beating each other just to make money. And there's people enjoying the pain of somebody. Maybe he needs money. He go in the stage to be beaten by somebody because he needs the money. This is evil actually. But if you go in a fight, you defend yourself, okay, fight. This is a fight. You want to train yourself? Well, you go join the army. Otherwise, everything else there, you know, is just an stupidity. Same as the football and soccer and those stuff. This is, it's a, it is filthy disgusting. And not only that, you go and you watch in the stadium, you'll find people beating each other. Like, they lose their mind. Literally, they lose their mind. Satan is there. You notice that those people who go to watch in a stadium, they are obsessed. They have a demon inside them. They start beating each other, burning the stadium. Even they use knives. What happened to the human being? I have respect to animals. But I'm losing my respect to the human. You know, animal, when he kill a lion, he killed to eat. When he's done eating, he don't kill no more. When he's done, he he you know he killed the deer, right? Then he walked next to the deer and he's done. Human being, he killed for no reason. He killed to kill. He killed for fun. He enjoy violence. And those people who they are like that, they are demonic, satanic. A person is willing to beat a person for the sake of a stupid ball. How demonic you are. How mental. I hope I'm not hurting the fiend of many, but this is the truth. And as you know, we don't take side when we say the truth. The truth hurt, but somebody have to say it. Right? Anyway, I want to say thank you guys for being here. Uh, uh, you get lost after here. Anyone who do play this game, he is no Christian. You cannot be Christian and you go beat people for the sake of money. This is not a Christian behavior. We don't care the name. We don't care who. Don't give me names. The world is full of liars and donkeys and deceivers. It's like saying to me, you know, actually those people are famous because people like you make them famous. If people go in the stage and they start fighting and nobody want to watch because they believe it's disgusting, then this game will, will demolish and this will not be called game no more. But because a human being decide to be sick, they see. Satanic. Those we call game now, and they are very popular. You will find the street is empty when there's two teams playing soccer or football. Because the world became crazy, 
stupid. There's many other things you can do in life. Life is short, my friend. Why you want to waste your money? Burn your blood. Join the fight is not yours. And mostly will be arrested and thrown in jail. And those who play, they are the rich who make millions from your pocket. And the stupid you, you make them rich. They have their own jet. They have their own villa. Each one of those players, he have uh, uh, 10 girlfriends. And the stupid you, take your money, give it to him. For what? And if they lose, they go crazy. And they make money, by the way, even when they lose. They, lose, they make money even from the t-shirt they wear. From the underwear they wear. From the sport shoes they wear. Even the car they drive, it's a commercial gift. But the poor you who hardly can afford to make a living, you go and give your money to those thieves. I saw in the news that uh, what this guy's name, Muhammad Salah. Muhammad Salah was escorted by the police because the crowd from Senegal was throwing balls. And what the heck is that? What happened to the people? Mental. Disgusting. Human being is the most dangerous creature. It's not the best. This is the truth. Human being is not the best. He is the worst. But he claimed to be the best. But the second you ask how in the world he is the best, In a serious way, you will find that you are really lying to yourself. It's like Islam, you know, Islam, like Muhammad, he killed everybody around him, and then they say he, he was sent as a mercy. This is how the world thinks today. The guy, he killed everybody around him. He raped everybody around him, even his own son, wife, he took her. But he was sent as a mercy. And Islam means peace. I mean, today, the day before, every day there's an attack made by terrorists. Go check in Israel what happened just today and the day before and the day before. But you will find people go on TV and they are leaders, presidents, say to you, Islam is peace. This is exactly how a human being is disgusting. They lost their dignity, their honesty. They kill each other for money. They make even killing each other a game. Even war is a game. You see, even when they go in war, they are trying to prove that their weapon is the best, so people will buy it. So they are willing to sacrifice a bunch of millions just for a war game, so the big companies make money. This is how it is. Anyway, I want to say... Thank you all for being here. And this is always my opinion. You don't have to agree with me. I have always my special way to see things. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe it's right. You'll be the judge. However, uh, educate yourself. Knowledge is important. And a human being without knowledge is a piece of meat. Is nothing but an animal who live with no mercy, with no life, with no value. And the knowledge come to you when you decide to think about what is the purpose of your existence. Do you want to be an animal? Who eat and drink and have sex? Or you are a person who have a purpose higher than your just physical needs? And then you ask yourself how I can find what is the purpose of my existence? If the purpose of your existence, according to you, is to go watch a football game, well, I feel sorry for you. If the purpose is to make a barbecue, sleep, snore, wake up, second day, make a barbecue, sleep, snore, wake up, go to work, come back, 
What a tragedy. You have to have a purpose. And the best purpose of a person is to serve others and to love others. Love never fails. And those who love others, they enjoy the joy nobody has. Even if nobody, nobody loved them. We just saw an idiot saying Putin did not do any wrong. He killed tens of thousands of people. He destroyed a country. And he did no wrong. And if you ask this person, he claimed to be Christian. This is exactly how Satan, he play with the mind of a human being. Those people, they side with government. They don't side with the truth. You see how disgusting a human being is? I'm just telling you an example. Putin did nothing wrong. He just posted. So shitting the houses of a human being, women, children, four millions left their houses because they don't have houses no more. He did nothing wrong. I mean, it's just four millions. Is that wrong? There's many they claim to be Christians. They are the most disgusting creatures ever. They are worse than Muhammad. Anyone he take aside with a criminal and killer, doesn't matter who is he. America, Europe, Africa, Asia, doesn't matter. When you side with the killer, you are a filthy killer. And you are demonic. And you know what? I pray to the Lord that those who have a joy in their heart for killing others, they themselves, they will punish severely based on their wish. To make it simple, I pray that your wish will come true, but to yourself. That's why the Bible says, wish to others what you wish to yourself. And you will find people who claim to be Christians, and even they are priests. They are praising this war. Very filthy, disgusting people. Far away from Christ. Far away. And again, I don't support the president of Ukraine. And I don't care for who this Putin is. We care for those people. Do you know what they are doing now to the children of Ukraine? Right away when they arrive to a country, like even Israel, right away they start forcing the young ones into prostitution, the mafia, in Europe, in Turkey, in Israel. And people lost their houses, lost their life, and right away the beasts are waiting for the young ones. Hey, you are looking for a job, you want to make money? They go after a young child, she is 14, she is beautiful. Very filthy. This is what Putin did. You will burn in hellfire with him if you support him. Thank you all for being here. And again, take no side, except the truth. A true Christian will never rejoice for killing Christians and even Muslims. As simple as that. Whoever rejoice for assaulting cities and towns and villages, he is no Christian. Doesn't matter who is he. And doesn't matter what nation he's assaulting. And doesn't matter if they are Christians or not Christians. Criminals are criminals, and they will burn in hell. Thank you all for being here, and I hope soon we will be back uh, live on air. And again, thank you for those who support the poor and the needy in Ukraine. I really am happy to have a great family like you who care to support. And you know the Lord, he says, from their fruits, you will know them. And remember, if you want to donate to Ukraine, don't donate to me. The donation you send to Ukraine, they have different account. And we post it many times. But don't donate to me. This not, if you make a donation to me, it's not going to go to Ukraine. There's a, they have an account in YouTube. And they have a title. They have a name. All right?
Actually, let me show you their their uh, their account. This is their account. It's called Charitable Organization Healthy Youth. Now the name may be strange for you because the original name is in Ukrainian. You know. Uh, so if you want to donate, you donate to them in case you want to support Ukraine. Don't send me donation to me. All right, to them. They are they, because the money will go to the church directly there. And they are the one who is giving food. I'm not giving food to name anyone. All right. So uh, I'm really happy. Like now we have 308. Now maybe the number is small, but I mean this is a great. 308 people. They decide to help those poor people who they are in bad need. Wonderful. And I hope the number will increase. Uh, let us see <laughs> no actually I don't have the link in the info but uh, here we go the admin is posting the link and maybe later the admin can post it in the comment section <clears throat> so people can see it uh, you know when I went to this uh, to Ukraine to do if you notice, I did not mention that I went there. Did you notice that? I did not tell anyone. Because when I do things, I don't like to tell what I did in my right hand. I mean, the same as the Bible says. When you do something good with the right hand, don't even let the left hand know. So I went there, this is a year ago. I never mentioned, ever, that I went there. I did seminars. But when the war started, I had to say, because the war really hurt. You know, it hurt me because I was there. I saw those villagers. I saw those people, how poor they are. I saw how good hearted they are. I traveled from city to city. And for sure, I paid for everything. I did not let them even spend, even for a taxi. Like I remember once, you know, they, they sent me a, a, a taxi and uh, they insist they want to pay, but I know that the taxi they will pay for is too much for them. Those people they don't take taxi. They don't take a cab. They take a bus. Bus full of people on top of each other, just to save little money. So I did not let them pay anything. Uh, I did not mention it, and I was not going to mention it. And there's many things I do I don't I never mention it to. Uh, but because of the war, and I wanted to confirm that the donation you will send to people I know, this is why I needed to say that I was there. <clears throat> and uh, you know, uh, sadly, you know, we have a churches who they are traditional. They never invited me. Until now, you believe it or not, not a single Orthodox Church, Catholic Church, invited me to talk about Islam. And you ask yourself, why? What is the problem? When I was in Ukraine, I spoke to an Orthodox priest. He speak English, he understand me. Uh, he made himself busy, I have to go now. Okay, nice to meet you. And he left his turn, his back to me, and he left to get in. Those people, they invited me. They were so excited to have me. You will not believe it. How much happy they were to receive the topic. They brought bishops, not just ministers, bishops of many churches to learn, to take notes. They took me to villages. We went to a village, a church. I mean, if you see the church, you might think like it's something big. It's just a small house. Hardly they were afford to buy it. The roof was collapsing, you know. Uh, and everybody their work is volunteer and those people are poor people you know 
and the church name is the good news you remember that i told you in like in the video i showed you that this van i i i, I was in this van because in the same van they took me to that church which they were building uh, all the one who work in it is volunteer their clothes is dirty working in concrete trying to fix this old house so this little tiny village they can have a church so i know how good they are as the lord he said from their fruits you shall know them and this is how i know those people I saw nothing but good fruit from them. Anyway, and maybe in the future I will be I will go there, but I don't know. I mean, I uh, I think I I do not need to go again because the trip is costly. The trip is long, and. Uh, and now we have our books translated to Russian. They were so happy to because we printed our books in Russian language, and we give it to them for free. Uh, printed, not a PDF file, you know, we, we gave them books in Russian language. And actually, one uh, professor in, in a Christian university there uh, mentioned uh, this person I met in person, you know, the, this professor. Uh, so this professor was talking about Islam, and then one of the students, he said, you should watch Christian Prince videos. That professor, he was shocked. He said, I, I never thought that I would hear from one of my students about you. You know, so we are reaching to all over. We are reaching to Russia. We are reaching. This is why translation of the books is so important. You know, and this is why. You know, when we speak now about uh, the war, we are not against the Russian. I will never be against the Russian. I love the Russian people. Always, I really have a special place for them. My fear is that when the war happened, Christians, they will start hating each other. War will bring hate, revenge. What do you want to say to a Christian kid, a Ukrainian kid, his father was killed by a Russian soldier? You tell him, love the Russian. How we can do that? You see why this war makes me angry? We should be one family. Instead of bombing each other, we should be building houses for each other. This is why those who support such a war, they are doing evil. Regardless if you agree with the government or not. Because the one who get killed is not the president. Those people always, they will have a nice place to live. Everybody will welcome them. Actually, soon my book will be uh, in Hindi language. I don't know which language is that. Will be published too. Uh, but anyway, with thanks to those. And by the way, my book in Korean language is already done, you know. But I told them don't publish it yet because I'm thinking to publish it for sale in Korea, but all the money will go to orphans and poor people in Ukraine. So we will see how we can publish the book through a publisher because, you know, Korean people, South, South Korea, they are not poor, right? So they can afford to, to pay for it. So I said to myself, well, uh, Maybe we can publish the book in Korean language as a book, printed book, and then all the money from that book will not be sent to me. I will sign a contract with the publisher that I release my right to this Ukrainian church, which means they will own the copyright of the Korean book. We will see how we can do it. If they agree, we will see. You know, uh, yeah, this is why because they can afford it. 
so it's good to you know uh, they will pay for it but we'll not make it expensive anyway so you know we can help those poor people in Korea otherwise I was planning to give it for free but it's just another way you know to give some support to those people if I can anyway I want to say thank you guys for being here I really appreciate all of you and uh, please forgive me when I say to one of you a word maybe I should not say because sometimes I say words but I don't mean to hurt you you know like I say idiot for somebody make a comment maybe you are a good person maybe you are better than me maybe 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 but this is how I am I cannot take wrong I speak in a natural way I don't sugarcoat my words uh, and the second you say something wrong I don't care what your name is this is how I am and you will see actually my admin sometimes they they take some heavy uh, comment from me and they are the admins working in the chat you know uh, but when they do something wrong I right away I give them a shower this is my nature uh, but I'm being truthful you know um, this is how I am I'm being truthful you say something wrong I'm over you I don't care if you are my friend for 20 years I will never take a side except the truth and the truth will set you free when you are with the truth you fear nobody and that will always lead your direction because if I start siding with this person because he's my friend or this person he make a donation to me or this like in the other day I blocked a person he sent me an email he said do you know how long I'm donating for you I said so he said how you blocked me and he said you said something wrong I will block you and please don't send me any more donation do you think like you're buying me because you make a donation you make a donation to support what I do not to treat you differently he apologized actually and he said no please I want to keep donating and keep my name blocked he was a nice person uh, but you know sometimes people they uh, you know, they think they will have a privilege or special treatment. Right? Anyway, so can we take a note that every Wednesday, 9 p.m. New York time, I will be live. And next Wednesday, if I see the number is a small, look at this. We have 734. Maybe it's not a good time. I don't know. We will see. So if next week, maybe I will consider it if this is the case, you know. But I'm assuming not too many people knows. We will see, all right. Uh, but uh, every Sunday, take a note now. Every Sunday at ten thirty a.m. New York time, I will be live on air. Every Sunday in my time, New York time. You convert that to your time, and you will know. So let us see how many people will be waiting on Sunday morning. And by the way, it might come. To the time is almost 10 30 and still you see nothing in my page still doesn't mean i will not come i'm not going to set it like a day before you know you will see it in the screen still even if you like now if you open uh, two hours ago there was no broadcast you know what i mean all right Yeah, but you know, the more we can have life with us is better because then we can answer questions. Same time, uh, you know, we want Muslims to come. You know what I mean? My friend, do you know, do you need to know where I live? I just said to you, New York time. I didn't know where you live. Well, why people they say those things to me? I don't know where you live. I just said to you, 10.30 a.m. New York time. They said to me, I don't know where you live. Hmm. 
question another person saying what time i am in california a friend who care if you are california or california 10 30 a.m sunday new york time you live in california you know what the time difference between you and and, uh, and new york do you want me to convert every time for everybody okay we are going to spend the coming three weeks just to convert time you know go live you ask me you say to me i'm from italy my name is antonio i make pizza how i can watch you and then i say antonio which uh, are you from sicily antonio you know come on or maybe the guy from Philippines, you know, the guy uh, Sheikh uh, Bashir, you know, man, what the heck, speak to me in English. You know, this guy, he challenged him for two months to debate. The second Christian prince appeared to debate them. They spent 25 minutes complaining about what we don't know. California, California. What, you, you don't like how to say California? California. Is it better? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, hey, Bambino. I'm from Italy. How I can watch you, you know? Yeah. Actually, I, I met a person from Italy in, the, in, in, in Romania when I was in Romania. Uh, at that time, we have a Trump as a president. So then I was sitting like in the bench, you know, we are waiting for a bus. And he said to me, so where are you from? I said, you're from USA. I said, yeah, you have a racist president. I, I, I gave him a shower. You should see the guy. I gave him a shower. Almost he had poopoo in his pant. He thought I'm going to kill him, honestly. <laughs> but I was not. I was just like, you know, talking, talking to him with no mercy. He said, if, so, if I go to your country, I said, why he is a racist? He said, he closed the border, he's building a wall. So if I go to Italy right now and I don't have papers, don't have visa, what do you do? What your country would do? He says, they will kick you out. I said, oh, you are racist then. You Italian are racist, don't you? Pizza, huh? You will kick me like a pizza. The guy, he could not understand what I'm saying. Like I said, what? He said, you just told me that if I don't have a visa and my visa is expired, you will kick me out. So Trump, he closed in the wall because they don't have a visa. Potato. You know? Yeah. Lord have mercy. Dummy European. They have no idea what's happening. They watch news. That's it. They told them uh, Trump is racist. That's it. He's racist. Why he's racist? Nobody knows. You know? That's it. He's racist. You like it? You don't? He's racist. Uh. Did the Ukrainian professor use? Yeah, they teach the real Islam, and they, yeah, they use my teaching actually. Actually, that university, the same one, they invite me to do a, 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 a lecture, a seminar, in the school, you know. Uh, and the students they were very excited. Uh, for sure, I have translator because they know a little English, not too much, so we have a translator. And, um, you know, they learn things they never heard it before. Very simple. Yeah, I don't, I don't change the way I talk. This is why when I go sometime to churches, you know, like as an example, when I did seminars in the Philippines, I remember once the minister, he was terrified. So he started presenting me. He said, today we have a brother who, you know, he's very, very knowledgeable about Islam. He's a scholar in Islam. But he speaks in a different way. And it's not like a normal, average person, you know. I mean, this guy, he start talking like five minutes, ten minutes, just to tell them about the disaster is going to be in the stage, you know. And I was afraid people would start leaving because what the heck? I mean, this guy is presenting who exactly? I mean, you scared the hell out of them. But he was afraid that because it's a church and this guy he will go and he will say things uh, 
you know, he, he would speak as a Christian prince, you know how Christian prince they speak. So he was like trying to prepare them for what is going to happen, you know? And then I said to myself, let me take the microphone from him before everybody leave, you know? So I took, I went to the, he, he did not even say, and uh, please, uh, please come and, you know, I took, I said, I think you introduced me enough, thank you very much, you know? And we start. And then after that, you know, you when you do the first seminar, you will start receiving invitation from everybody because there's a, they invite other churches, ministers to join. So you finish the seminar before even you step from the, you know, they start saying to you, can you come to our church? Can you come to our church? But he was terrified, you know, uh, because this is a topic they never spoke of. And this is a guy, he don't, he don't sugarcoat things. And he used words maybe should not be used in a church, you know. Is not really too much, uh, you know, nice, you know, whatever you want to call that word, nice, polite, whatever. Anyway, but anyways, so anyway, like after the uh, the seminar, people they were dying from laughing. It was like the the best comedy ever they had. Um, uh, they you know they use like every church they have like a big room either for festivals or uh, basketball or whatever you know activities. They use this place for the event in the church uh, for the occasion for the seminar. So we start like half the chairs are full, half the hall is full, and then they start texting each other. You know, like you know, you know, Filipinos. I don't know how many of you are Filipinos here. I mean, the text machine is starting, and then people they start pouring from everywhere, and then the door are booked. You cannot even find a place. There is a stadium. All the chairs around are full. Not only the the the, the ground where they have the chairs. There's a the chairs where like it's used. It's a stadium for for basketball. Uh, and then when I'm done, they don't want me to leave, you know. But it was the best comedy ever. Very very funny. Yeah, the guy he went. One of them he he, he almost you know have a heart attack. Yeah, and you know when you do those seminars, you see a lot of funny stuff and uh, uh, like once after I finished a seminar, there's two girls they came and I was shaking hands with people and then two of them they were talking to each other and they are hesitating to talk to me or not. I saw them, so I said, "So how I can help you?" She said, uh, "I have a question." I said, sure. I said, are you Christian Prince? <laughs> Are you a Christian prince? They said, maybe. She jumped. She said, see, I told you. This is him. This is his voice. Because, you know, when they, uh, there's only one church, they publish in the post Christian prince. The rest of the churches, they never say Christian prince. So she told the other girl that this is a Christian prince. The other girl, she said, no, I don't think so. And then... <laughs> I said, yeah, but don't tell anyone, okay? She said, nobody will know. Nobody. And right away, her text, she grabbed the phone, both of them, she started texting God knows where. Facebook, like, don't tell anyone, okay? Nobody knows. Don't say that to a Filipino. <laughs> don't tell anyone, okay? Yeah, sure. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, it was funny. Lovely people, anyway. Yeah, I know, because, you know, the voice is... Uh, but, you know, when you use their microphone, and most of them, they never heard of me, actually, you know. But there is some. Actually, even the ones who invited me first time, they met me first time, they don't know how I look like. Uh, so when I met them in... Uh, there's a coffee shop. It's not Starbucks. I think it's called Coffee Seattle, something like this. Um, so I sat with them, you know, I introduced myself, and then one minister, or he's a bishop, I'm not sure, he asked the one who invited me to come, he took him aside, and they start speaking, like, I don't know what they are talking, they are looking at me and speaking, but later they told me, later they told me what they were saying, he asked him, are you sure this is a Christian prince? You know? He said, how do you know? 
he said this is his voice <laughs> are you sure no no i don't take pictures i don't take pictures for myself so how they can take pictures of me i'm scared of myself you know if i see uh the most scary uh, thing i don't get scared but i see myself i get scared so nobody who's going and trust me nobody want to take a picture with me because that's will be scary you know you no know, it's not a starbucks it is uh, i think it's called coffee seattle the place yeah i had you know i had tons of stories when i go to those seminars uh like uh, in Ukraine, actually, I was in Kiev. And then, you know, I met with uh, some people and, you know, the topic right away come because there's a lot of Muslims, you know, they come as tourists uh, to Kiev and they come to Ukraine for sure, for one reason, you know, they come, there's prostitution, you know, as in many European countries and many Asian and Middle Eastern, anyway, prostitution is a business. So, you know, we're talking about Islam. And then the, the, the person I'm talking to, uh, he said, oh, sounds like you know a lot about the topic. And I said, I'm learning. He said, you learn from who? Can you give me like where I can read, where I can, uh, you know, where I can watch videos? So imagine, guys, I could not even tell him, go and watch Christian Prince videos. <laughs> uh, you are from Cagayan de Oro. I was there in the year 2017, I think. 17, 16, I forgot really. Yeah. Now I went to Cagayan de Oro. Right away, you arrive in the airport, you see a mosque in the airport. And everybody in the airport work there is Muslims. Hijab, there's a sheikh. You know, you can tell that territory is controlled by Muslims. You know? There's an airport. I don't know if it belonged to Cagayan de Oro as an airport because we had to drive for some time. But in the airport itself, in the corner, when you enter the entrance, if you are from there, I'm sure you can confirm, there's a mosque right away. And then after like 500 meters away from the airport, I saw the flag of ISIS. Uh, are you planning to visit Tennessee? Yeah. Maybe I am in Tennessee, you never know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, let's see. If I go to a place, I don't tell people I'm going. I don't, I don't, you know, if, if uh, let us say a church invited me, I don't go and publish and tell everybody because this is uh, my, I like to do my work in a, like in a private way. Uh, first, it's a charity work and, you know, I prefer not to talk about it, you know. Unless, like, I mean, just like now to tell some comedy things happen. Um, do you ever come to Indonesia, Malaysia, or Thailand? I've been in uh, in Thailand. Uh, Thailand is a beautiful place, actually, but sadly. It is, yeah, I mean, I don't know, like, uh, it's a target for the pervert one. But for sure, everyone goes where he belongs, right? So there is a lot of uh, pervert, they go to Thailand. Prostitution, homosexuality, uh, and you name it. This country is really something. Uh, but uh, Thailand as a country is beautiful, and I went to a church there. 
but the Christian community there is a, is a small community still. It's, it's a growing, you know, it's a growing good actually. They are doing good, uh, but they are still a small community. I will be happy to have coffee with you, my friend James. Uh, have you ever visited the African country? No, I never. I wish there's many places I wish I can go to. But you see, because of the internet now, we do not need to go anywhere. I mean, before I was saying, guys, if you want to have a seminar, invite me and I will pay for it from my pocket, etc. But then, you know, you in order to schedule a seminar, and we'll have like let's say five hundred people. We'll take them a month, two months, and then you pay for flight, hotel, a lot of money, and they will give you two hours. Here we go. I go live in YouTube. I have a seminar right now. We have almost eight hundred. Yeah. You know what I mean? The internet change everything uh, before we have you have to be there physically and before not long time ago I actually I tried to make a TV station I don't know how many of you know that because there was no YouTube like now I mean you cannot go live and etc so the only way I, I, I thought about it we can make maybe a satellite TV station but then when we found out how much the cost is and nobody really support very few people they, you know they they support the idea so we could not make it but then when YouTube come and internet become faster, then okay, we can go live, you know, and uh, we'll need TV station anyway. See, these days nobody watch TV station, right? Nobody. Everything is in the internet. People, they do shopping in the internet, they get married in the internet, they get divorced in the internet. Uh, you name it, right? The internet created a lot of opportunity and a lot of destruction too, depending on how you use it. As anything in life, I mean, it can be used for good or used for bad. You should go on radio. I think I don't think radio is a good thing. I think what we do here is better. Why? Because uh, here I can show you a reference. You know what I mean? If I say in radio and I, uh, I'm i just uh, d deleting my ability to share with you the most important thing in what we do, which is the reference. So I prefer always to do it the way I'm doing it, not in radio. Actually, I used to have a radio program. Do you know uh, a brother Osama Dakdok? You know him, Os Osama? Uh, we had uh, we had many programs together on radio, uh, and I did many radio programs. But as I said before, there's no YouTube like this. Uh, there's no live broadcast. The only thing is radio. Um. Yeah, first time I met with Osama Dakdok, it was very funny. I went there and I look for the address, the church. Um, and then his, you know, I ask a lady outside. I told her, "I'm here. To, can I? I'm looking for Osama Dakto." Uh, she looked at me and she was like, "What the heck is this guy? A scary guy." So she was very curious and very, very, you know, suspicious. And then uh, I followed her, and then we went to the church. He was in the church. You know, they have like a, a stage where they have their equipment for audio and computer. He was sitting there. 
So um, she said to him, this gentleman, he want to talk to you. He looked at me. Uh, he said, okay, how I can help you? But he was like uh, suspicious too, because, you know, I'm Middle Eastern, you know, it's fishy. So the second I open my mouth and I say, hey, Osama, he said, no. I... <laughs> <laughs> he said, if I see you for a thousand years, I will never imagine that this is the person who I hear his voice. No way. This is you? You know? I said, this is me. So he was expecting something else, you know? He didn't want to say he got scared. And his wife, actually the one, the lady, she took me to him. It was his wife. I scared the hell of her, obviously. You know, and I have my gun with me. I don't know if she saw it because you know, you know, you cannot, you cannot hide it. I mean, it was summer time, and uh, you know the it's under the shirt. So, like, she delay her walk and she walk like. So I walk and she suddenly she stopped and she became in behind me now. So I don't know if she saw it or not. So like, what the heck? Yeah. <clears throat> Do you speak any other languages? I speak all languages, but I forgot about them since I started reading the Quran. How you can remember any language after reading the Quran? It's the best language ever. Come on. You know? Uh, No, you know, um, uh, I look serious. I look very serious, and I look, I look, like, I look like, you know, like a mafia guy. You know, exactly. You see those like Italian mafia movies. You know, exactly. I used to go in the elevator, and you know, like, and I say good morning, nobody answer me. Um, but sometimes look is deceiving, right? I mean, some people, some people, you think they. They look like criminals, but maybe they are the, the kindest uh, people ever, you know, you met. Or they are very peaceful. I cannot say I'm the kindest or the peaceful one, but, you know. You know the thing. Will you ever translate your book to language of the birds? For sure, it's very easy. See, here we go. I mean, if Allah can send more, you know, he sent Quran as a, as a, as a, as a sound of a bell. I cannot make uh, my book in bird language. Hello. Um, <clears throat> oh, Saddam Hussein looked nice, actually. I wish I looked like him. Don't, okay, guys, don't you notice I'm still single? What's wrong with you? Is that explaining to you something? You people are weird. You know, like why in the world that I mean, come on, obviously, it's very bad, very horrible. You know, last time I went to the saloon to their haircut, everybody left, even the guy who did haircut, he left. I don't know where they go. They said, We have to take lunch now. I said, Now I was waiting for last two hours, you know, what do you mean? Now everybody is gone. They said, uh, well, You know, it's lunchtime, you know. So, okay, well, take care. Uh, <laughs> you are le learning the language of the dinosaur. But if you are a dinosaur, why are you learning the language of the dinosaur? I'm not getting the joke, my friend. I thought you are a dinosaur yourself. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's good to have a like a like a conversation out of the garbage of Muhammad, right? Just for fun. Maybe one day, you know, we can meet with some Christians, have some just coffee, and it will be beautiful, isn't it? But uh, you know, due to the nature of what we do, it's not easy to do it. Um, Jesus was not good looking guy either, as a prophesied in the Bible. Edward, I don't know about that. Where in the Bible it says Jesus was not a good looking? I'm not sure where you get this from, my friend. But if you can show us the verse, then you know that will be interesting. I will learn something from you. 
Uh, anyway, you know, when people, they talk about looking for the look, people, they have their own standard in life for what is good looking and what is not good looking. But then what make a person good looking for you is when, you know, this person uh, became lovely to you, not by look, but by behavior, by support, by understanding. Uh, but most of people, they uh, fail what they call in love based in a look. And that's why they end in a horrible way. Because they see a person, let's say you see a woman, she is really pretty. Then you are in love with her beauty, not her. Then after you are with her, you marry her, you have a family now. Then you start discovering things about her, which is not nice. And she starts discovering things about you, which is nice, nice too. And the result of that, both of you are not nice to each other. Because you never know each other really. And we are in love with the appearance, not what is inside. The second you start digging inside the box, you find that you are not there. Uh, was Joseph very handsome according to the Bible, like the Quran? You know, for you know, the story in the Quran is very embarrassing and very silly. Um, but I believe they have a root of those stories. Or was Muhammad? He take things, most of his things, he took it from the Jews and the Jewish tradition, not Jewish uh, biblical. What is the good re respond when Muslims they say Jesus claimed to be a prophet in the in Luke four twenty four? You know, first of all, Muslims they are the last one who can claim anything about the Bible because they don't even know their book. Secondly, the first prophet is God, because all prophecies is coming from God. Just think about it a little bit deep. You know, when I say I am a prophet. Who is the one who gave me the prophecy to prophesy it? God. So God is the only prophet. The rest, you know, they are prophet who deliver the prophecy, but they are not really the one who prophesy it. I don't know if what I'm saying is clear to you or not, but. Uh, there is a person, he learned, as an example, to be a doctor. By what? By studying. Studying books of who? Of people who wrote the books before him, for him. Those are the professor. So the doctor who became a doctor, he did not really become a doctor. He became a learning person from people who taught him, right? Uh, in case of Jesus, uh, Jesus was called a prophet, he call, was called master, he was called Lord God. But when Jesus, he says, no prophet is accepted in his hometown a town, or etc., he has given you an example that anyone who come uh, with the news is not welcome in his hometown. But Jesus is a prophet, and Jesus is God at the same time. For the only one, even the Quran says that when Jesus, he is born, he did not need Jibreel to come and teach him. Muhammad, he have 40 years waiting time to become a very old, I mean, 40 years is not a kid. He become an old man, grown man, mature man. And then at the age of 40, he start receiving verses. In the Quran, Jesus was born with the knowledge. Then if the Muslim they say to you that Jesus was a prophet, then why the prophet did not receive knowledge like every prophet? I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? How Muhammad received his prophecy as a prophet? They say to you, Jibreel. Okay, fine. Show me where Jesus received prophecies and teaching from Jibreel. He was born speaking as a child. He is just born. He speak wisdom 
with maturity. So obviously Jesus is the Word of God who become a person in the flesh. This is why Jesus, even in the Quran, is the walking, talking, living Word of God. Jesus did not need to receive knowledge from a teacher. He did not need to receive inspiration. Jesus, he forgives sin. He don't wish you your sin to be forgiven. So when a Muslim he say things, well, as long you believe, if you are saying that Luke 4 is what you like to look for 24, well, do you accept Luke 4? The second you say, do you accept Luke 4? They will say no. And here right away, you will see the hypocrisy of this garbage religion. Or they claim to be a religion because either you accept what Luke 4 saying or you don't right uh, isn't it in Luke 4 the devil he took Jesus to the high mountains and showed him the kingdom of the world and he said to him uh, you know uh, all this authority will be be given to you and their glory, you know, um, if you uh, worship before me, etc. So, uh, uh, you know, what, what Jesus said to him, proving who is he? He said to him, get behind me, Satan, for it's written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. And then isn't it Thomas who said to Jesus, he worshiped him, and he said, my Lord, my God. Muslims are hypocrite people, right? And then when Satan, the same chapter, uh, he said to him, well, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. So is it possible that the Muslim, they did read the chapter, Luke chapter four, and they went all the way to 24, but they did not see verse number nine or 10. You know what I mean? I mean, here it says that if you are, this, if you are, if you claim to be the son of God, we'll do this. Let us see how the angels will, you know? I mean, it's a mockery. It's a joke what Muslims they say. But here they, sometimes you ask yourself the question, why a Christian person, he need even me, to tell him how to answer. But you don't go and read the chapter, my friend. It's easy. The whole chapter saying to you who is Jesus. So when Satan he tried to tempt, you know, to, to tempt, to, to tempt uh, Jesus, what Jesus said to him? It has been written. It has been said, "You shall not tempt the Lord your God." So he said to Satan, "You are trying to tempt me. I am your Lord. I am your God." Uh, <clears throat> poor Muslims, they are desperate. Very desperate. Any other question? But it doesn't hurt if if you say Jesus is a prophet because God is a is a first the the, the only prophet the, the only prophet is God. For all prophecies coming from God. So Jesus can be prophet, can be the master, can be the teacher, can be the Lord. He is the good shepherd. He is good. For God is good. All those names they belong to Jesus. Why not? Well, about Jesus is speaking about the hour. Well, if you read the chapter, my friend, you will see that Jesus, he confirmed the authority of him over the flesh, isn't it? So Jesus, he confirmed that he is God. But there is a, there is, let's say, uh, a divided 
the uh, work to be done. I work and my father work too, right? So Jesus have his own mission and the father he have his own work. The one who will announce the day of judgment is the father. Why? Because he's the father. Well, why, why Jesus he call him the father? You ask yourself? When I when I when somebody come to me, you know, in the Middle East we have our tradition, right? So if you come to ask for something and I'm living in the house of my father, then you have to speak to my father, not to me. That's why I call him my father. So Jesus, he when he say my father, my father, my father, obviously the father is called the father for a reason and the son is called the son for a reason too this is why jesus he said let your will be done so the son is in total agreement with the father so when jesus says i've been given the authority over the flesh it's given to him by who from the father And the Father is the one in charge of the judgment day when it's going to be. But the one who is going to judge in the judgment day is Jesus. This is why it's called the Trinity. So if you are a Christian and a Mohammedan, he asks you, you should say, well, don't you know that we believe in the Trinity? Right? And how come the Muslim they see again? They see the whole. They don't. I mean, they read the whole chapter, but they skip the whole chapter. They go to one verse. If you read the chapter, you will see Jesus tell them exactly what will happen before the judgment day. So what Jesus is saying that nobody won't know when it's going to be for two reasons actually. Number one, you remember the story of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember the story? You remember the story in the Old Testament when it says if there is, uh, uh, you know, like uh, 10 righteous people, are you going to destroy a city? You remember? So if there is only 10 righteous people, God will not destroy the city. So here we understand that the judgment day is going to come when there is no righteous left. So it is us who make it come fast or make it go slow. The more or the less, let us say, uh, righteous people we have, the faster judgment they will come. So if you go there, you will see Jesus saying to them, uh, you know, as an example, when, uh, uh, when, when, when the following days they come, uh, when a person he deliver a person, a brother he deliver a brother. Uh, when you see false Christ, false prophets shall rise, uh, uh, you know, uh, seduce, etc. Uh, seduce even the the elect one, even the Christians. You know, uh, you know when you see those days of a tribulation, uh, the, sh the sun shall be darkening and the moon shall not be given its light. So Jesus obviously, is, he knew what the judgment day is. But the announcement of the judgment day is in the hand of the Father. So when all of those things happen, when the stars of heaven shall fall and the power of heaven shall be broken, shaken, which means everything you used to have, the nature you used to have, is, is in collapse. The system is collapsing. Then they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with the great power and glory. How come the Muslim did not see that? Where is Jesus coming from? He's coming from the heaven in the cloud with the power and the glory. But God is only one who have a glory. And then you will see and shall, and he then shall he send his angels 
Jesus will send his angels. How come the Muslim did not see that? And the story continue, you know? So when Jesus says he will send his angels, who is Jesus then? What he is saying? If I say I will send you my angels, that's mean I am the one who owned those angels or has created them, and those angels belong to me, and I am the one who have the command on them. Did I answer you? Will he come back in the same body as he came with before? Well, uh, you know, for me, I don't really question how the Lord will come because I think uh, the second coming of Christ will be different. Uh, he will come as a, uh, you know, as a judge. He will punish. He will be, uh, I mean, the same person, but different uh, attitude because your time is up. You know what I mean? So, however he come, I'm not going to read to question that. Because the Lord, anyway, he come as he wish. It's not me who tell him uh, his, how his body will be. Uh, but what we care for is he's going to come to take the elect one, us. And we will not be left alone. And the end is going to be our beginning, not our end. Sometimes people, they like to ask questions, which is not really, I mean, it doesn't make any difference how Jesus will come. Uh, you know, people talk about a lot of details. As an example, like some people, they believe that uh, before you go to heaven, you are going to be punished for your sin. Some people, they say, no, this is not what's going to happen. I say, I think those people, they are just trying to waste their time. And it's like somebody looking for entertainment. Because at the end of the day, the Lord, he will do what he will do. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not your opinion. So why you want to argue about it? When it's not in my hand or your hand, what the Lord will do. If you are a believer, well, the Lord will do what is needed to be done. Uh, how you will know the people from the Antichrist? Very easy. Isn't it Jesus? He said, from their fruit, you shall know them. You see, when somebody do, as an example, somebody, he do a miracle. Satan, he have a power. He can do a powerful thing. But the fruit is where you follow. So let us say I'm a person trying to claim to be an, uh, Christ. I come to you, says, hey, I'm Christ, follow me. And then I have, I'm going to do a miracle for you, you know? But then right away you will notice that my ethic is bad. From their fruits, you shall know them. Fruits is not necessarily a miracle you, in a person he do, because isn't it, the, isn't it Jesus said that not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my Father, but the one who do his will? And then they will say to him, we did miracles in your name. He said to them, depart from me, I do not know you. So because they did use his name for their glory, they don't know them. Uh, so you can be a person who do miracle in the name of Jesus, but yet you are satanic. The miracle happened because of the name of Jesus is powerful and the faith of the person make him healed. Isn't Jesus says your faith healed you? So your faith in Jesus depending on how strong it is can change things. So those people who do miracles, even those they can be false. So but how we know that they are false? Again, there is a fruit. What they want. All those people who, like, you know, you see some people, they claim to be prophets these days. They have a huge churches like Muhammad. 
But right away he would say, I saw a dream that the Lord, he says to me, you should have, a, you know, a, an airplane by yourself. Like, isn't it obvious? Women, sex, money. And then religion. So always, you know, Satan, he exposed himself. You know, sooner or later. This is why we say, don't, you know, the, the Messiah will come with, with the, you will see him as he said, just said, we said, read a verse. He will say with the glory of his angels in the cloud. So obviously, the false Messiah, he cannot do what the Messiah can do. You know what I mean? The false Messiah will be a person walking between us. Maybe he will do miracles, but he will not be able to come with the glory of his, uh, his glory and the angels. So obviously the Messiah, he doesn't have a glory. <laughs> you know, like, uh, you, you as a human, and you are just a normal human, sometimes you recognize evil, just even from a voice of a person, right? Uh, even a dog, a dog, and he is an animal. He can recognize a, a bad energy. So, do you think the Lord He will not give you the ability to recognize Him? Especially, He will come with the glory of His. You know, I'm I'm not sure uh, how to explain that to you. But look at this picture we have in the screen now. Imagine suddenly the Messiah is coming with the glory of his angels. How that will be? We look at those stars, how amazing they are. But imagine those stars, they don't present anything of a real glory of the Lord. So the Lord, when he come, I mean, even if you are blind, you will see him. And I believe there's no blind will be left blind. So, I'm not worried really about how we can recognize, but uh, I say to you, uh, recognizing who is bad and good is very important for us today, because there's many people, they claim to be good. Anyone, he want your money, he want sleep with your wife, maybe, or with you. Uh, anyone, he want to, gl to glorify himself, uh, seek authority, uh, uh, you know, he, obviously he is not a Christian and he is not following Jesus. That's why Jesus, when he washed the feet of his disciple, the disciple they were like, how we can let you do it? He said to them, if you don't let me do it, you don't belong to me. So a true Christ is a person who is not like anyone. I never saw I never saw a deceiver, yet he don't want money, he don't want sex, he don't want authority. All of them, they share the same thing. So always there is a way to find out. You know, imagine Christ is coming, and then he need you... Uh, you need your money. That will be will be a joke, isn't it? Or he's looking for some pretty girls. So there's many ways to know who is Christ is. And if the Lord, he says, from their fruit you shall know them, and he speak about normal human, so about how about the glory of the Lord? So his glory alone is going to be enough. And how to explain the glory? Look at the sky and imagine. I believe nobody can explain it because it's called the glory or nobody can explain it. Uh, did Jesus have a biological brother? Well, you know, some uh, Christian scholars, they say, yes, he have. But for me, I mean, who care? Uh, because Jesus said, my brothers is those, those, the disciple, right? Um, 
when Jesus said, well, I was hungry and you feed me and it was thirsty and you give me water or drink and I was a stranger and you took me in and they said to him, Lord, when we did that to you, he said, when you do it to my brothers, you do it to me. So the Lord, he humbled himself really down to earth and he called us the brothers, which is really amazing. So when you when some people focus on things, I find that those things is not really it's not important because it's still Jesus said, I am from above, you are from below. Which means all of us from below. So let us say if Jesus have a brother, he is still from below. Jesus have a mother, she is still from below. Do you understand me? So we are coming from different places. We are the human, we are coming from below, coming from dust. He the Messiah, he is coming from above. So all those questions, I found them useless. It's good to ask questions so we can discuss, right? But I'm saying as a, as a question doesn't really give you much if you know really who is Jesus. Because who care if Jesus have brothers or not? Because still they are not really brothers. See, even when, when, uh, when, when we ask any Christian, they will say to you that uh, the genealogy of Jesus says that he is a son of David, correct? It's in the Bible. But Jesus himself, he asked the Jews, he said, what say you of Christ? What, who is Christ? He's, they said he is a son of David. He said to them, well, if he is a son of David, then how David call him my Lord? He call him God, a, Lord, a, a Lord and God in spirit. So, biblically, the Bible keeps saying that Jesus by birth, by flesh, is born of Miriam, etc. Uh, he all the way go to David, but the reality is, even David have nothing to do with Jesus. For Jesus, before Abraham I am, he said. So David was not even born, Abraham was not born, but Jesus was there. So David belonged to Jesus, not the opposite. Do you understand my, my answer? If Jesus, he said, before Abraham I am, and the Muslim, they said, you were Jesus, says, I'm God, which is funny. Before Abraham I am, this is the grandfather of all the Jews, right? So before even the Jews are exist, Jesus was exist. So Jesus was telling them that David, I am his God, and he called me my God. He called me Lord. He worshiped me. So the question some people they ask, uh, it, it, it's good to ask them, but I find them, it, it, that's mean you are not thinking deep. You have to think, you know, if you don't really learn about Christ, you need to read deep. Most of people, they are shallow readers. They don't even read. I mean, they just go like, you said that reading uh, the Aramaic language is qarra, Wara'a. Qarra is like you move your lips, you know. Ra'a is something you saw. So your lips move with something you saw with your eyes. Uh, but this is just reading. It's, you know, just move your lips with something you saw. The Bible always encourages us to learn, not just to read. That's why Jesus he said, read the books, you know, search the books, and you find the truth, and truth will set you free. So in order to find the truth, it's not by moving your lips like the Mohammedan, but they don't understand what they are reading. It's by knowing what you are reading. 
So always you ask yourself when you read a verse or, or, or a chapter in the Bible, what I understand, did I read or I, I just did read or I understood? Most of people, they just read. They just read. When every verse in the Bible is really very deep meaning, and Jesus is, in, I mean, his depth of talk is beyond. I'm not saying that because I'm a Christian. Remember, I am a Christian because I am, I'm amazed of the way he, he you know, he talk. Like, when you see Jesus, he says, I am from above. He said to them, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I mean, that's astonishing. That would answer all the lies when they say Jesus never said I'm God. It's like Jesus giving us a great tool to refute all the liars when they speak about Jesus. Anyway, guys, I think it's time to go. I want to say thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you again, I say Christ is Lord. And we as a true believers, our fruit will be judged. Our fruit will be the judge. Christ will come as a judge, yes. But from their fruits, you will be known. So even the Lord himself, he will know you by your fruit. So always be sure to be the good tree who give good fruits for your family, for your children, for your friends. Wish to yourself what to wish to others. Don't wish war to others because wars will come to you then. You wish evil, evil will knock at your door. Thank you. God bless you. And I hope we will go live again tomorrow, the day after we will see. Take care.